Hi, my name is Paul Glatzel. I'm an OA instructor and examiner and we're here today at MDL Cobbs Key Marina on a motor cruiser to have a look at the whole idea behind navigation, using your chart plot as your multifunction displays to navigate between two places. Just the sort of thing you're going to be doing when you're out there on the water. So what we're going to have a look at is the multifunction displays, the chart plotter we've actually got here. And we're going to have a look at how we look to build a route and the issues around navigating using a chart plotter. So we're going to come up with some hints, tips and tricks that you need to be aware of when you're putting your planning together to go between those two points. So here we have a Raymarine Axiom multifunction display. We tend to call them a chart plotter, but the displays can do so many more things than just purely display our charts, but that's what we're going to use it for. And we're actually just going to look at a typical passage from the entrance to Pool Harbour out towards the Solent. Now to get in and out of ports and harbours we're going to need a pilotage plan and we're not going to seek to cover that here. We're just going to look at the building of the route between two places. So let's start by putting a route in. So there are different ways to do it. I'm going to start here by just pressing and build route is an option and it brings up a green cursor. And every chart plot is going to be slightly different but on this one and I'm zoomed quite some way out here I just drag across and I sort of like put a waypoint in. And then I'm going to go up and I've chosen I'm going to go the north channel through and into the Solent. And I'm only going to put a few waypoints in just for the purposes of this exercise and I've put three or four waypoints in there and I've got an option to finish route build. Now that's the easy bit. We're scrolled out a long way and we've just from a top level just put that route in and I'm going to select follow. Now I'm not immediately going to follow because the step that's so often missed out is to go back and check this route. So I'm now going back and I'm going to walk along, I'm going to zoom in and walk along that route and have a look at what I'm going close to and what I'm going over. Because there's always a danger there's a rock or a buoy fairly near that track. And the problem you have is you don't know from the sort of charts we use in under 24 meter boats how accurate the position of a rock is. And that's a problem with these unofficial charts. So therefore by leaving lots of space we diminish the extent of that problem. So I come along here and it's all looking pretty good. And then you can see I've got these change of colours where I've put this waypoint. I've got 20 metres depth of water here. I've got 9 metres, 10 metres, 7 metres. Now there's more than enough water for this boat. Well, what's the problem with going across that shallower bit? Well, fish like shallower bits, lobsters like shallower bits, increased flow of water so you'll find lobster pots, maybe fishing lines. Um, and it makes sense for us to skirt that shallower water because it's more likely to be rough there. Now it might be fine today but I might use this route tomorrow. So it makes sense for me to actually look to move this waypoint down. So I'm going to have to drag that waypoint down and we're going to get into that about how we actually move a waypoint in a moment. So I'm just noting in my first walk that actually I want to move that waypoint down if I can. Also I've got a yellow boy just there, special mark. So that's another good reason to move that down. Carrying on along, got another yellow mark quite close there. Again, why not let's move away from that? Because whilst today the conditions might be great, I might use this same route tomorrow when the visibility is restricted or it's night time and that's an unlit boy by the looks of it. Um, sorry, correction, that is actually lit, but um, I don't want to go too close to that boy if I can. And then we've got this green one, we're rounding, you can see that waypoint, the turn point, is adjacent to that green and that's good, that's what we call a verifiable waypoint. If we can put waypoints in where there's some other feature we can look at and we can reference our route with, that's good practice. And then we come along here and we're just running along this channel. It takes a bit close to uh, the beach there, so we might want to drag that waypoint out. So I've done that first overview, that top level view of my route, and now what I can do is go back in 
and actually look to move the waypoints around to put them in slightly safer, more sensible positions. So we've come back to this waypoint that's sitting over Christchurch Ledge here and every chart plot is slightly different but the question is how do I move this waypoint and one of the things that we we need to do is read a manual look at a YouTube video and work it out but with this one we just click on that waypoint and actually we get a few options go to build route chart info but what we want here is more options and there's an option move and here it's then just about dragging the chart upwards and it drags the buoy down and you can see I've sort of like just dragged it into clearer water um, and that clearer water deeper water so it's in amongst the sort of 20 meter um, charted depth that we've actually got there so that's a that's a great place to put it um, what we can't see here and would see if we scrolled out is sort of north of this position is a headland and therefore it's a good verifiable waypoint position as well so we click on save and that's then locked that in and we can just do the same with any of these other waypoints so we've looked at how we use in the example here a raymarine chart plotter to form a route between locations but we've also got an option with tablets or smartphones and we see here a product called Savvy Navi uh, which is very popular and that gives us the ability to in the same way plan a route between two places there are other options though available on some uh, products which is what's called auto routing uh, we can put a start and a finish place in and the product will actually create a route between the two places. You need to be really careful though because with anything that a, a tablet or a plotter gives to you, you still need to check it. You need to go to that start point, walk along the route, check that it's not passing too close to objects or dangers to check that there are waypoints at verifiable positions. So it doesn't alleviate the need you have as a skipper to look at what it's actually produced for you and just check it's safe for the route you actually want to follow. So irrespective of what you do, just make sure you put that time and effort in to understand what your system can do, to look at the safety of the route you're actually going to follow. And you know, I'd always recommend going and speaking to a training centre and getting an instructor to spend some time with you having a look at the whole background behind putting a route in. Um, and how you actually go through the checks and balances you need to to make sure the route's going to be safe for your boat and for you.